Hello, everyone. My name is Larry Novak. I am the Chief Structural Engineer with the International Code Council. I'd like to certainly thank our hosts, SK Goshen Associates, for hosting today. We really appreciate their help. They are all one of the ICC family of companies, so we're honored to have them. Today, it is my pleasure to talk to you about the practical approach to designing structural concrete using the Strutton High method, utilizing the latest that's in ACI 318.19, the American Concrete Institute Design Code. We're going to have a lot of things to discuss today, so hopefully everyone can hear me okay. Um, you also should have been able to download the slide set. So without further ado, I'd like to get started. So today we're going to be discussing first the behavior of structures and how this all fits together, the code requirements and model development. And then we're actually going to work through an example and not your standard, you know, transfer girder example, something fairly complex so it can show the intricacies of the process. On the screen, you can see a couple of towers I've worked on. On the lower right is the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest structure. I was the lead structural engineer on that as when I was an associate partner with Skidmore, Owings and Merle. So strut and tie, it is actually defined in ACI 318 as a truss model of a member or dos discontinuity region made up of struts and ties connected at nodes and capable of transferring the factored loads to the supports or adjacent beam regions. So as you can see on the screen, an example, and some of the kind of terminology we need to use is a tie is going to be the tension element. We're only going to count the rebar. We don't count concrete in tension. The strut is going to be the compression parts. And the nodal zone will be where the compression and the tie intersect. So it's this gray area, now purple. And then we also have different types of compression struts. We can have a boundary strut, which is on an edge of a member, and we can have an interior stretch, which is completely inside of a member. Well, let's talk a little bit about behavior and understanding how shear and stirrups work to better understand a strut and tie. What you see up on your screen is half of a structure, and it's as simple as you can get. Made it with my son, a piece of wood. But what's unique about it, it is, has a hook where we can apply downward load. But we've put a cut in it along the curved black line. We literally saw cut the piece of wood, screwed on a brass hinge up at the top for the compression zone, and then most importantly, drilled a vertical hole through the wood and strung through that a bungee cord. And that bungee cord represents a stirrup, an item that can only take tension. So normally, if you would cut this without the bungee cord, this would be a pin. There'd be a pin here, and this would be a mechanism. Well, what happens as you apply load? Well, what happens is that bungee cord stretches, which allows it to take the load that's coming down here and lifting it back up, and then it can come down to the support. So that makes an actual system out of what would have been a mechanism. So really, you, what you can see here is really a truss superimposed on top of a continuous medium where the continuous medium is going to crack in tension. And you use the tension elements, the bungee cord here, steel and a con reinforced concrete beam, to move the load through those systems. And one of the things I want to note here is you notice the bungee cord is knotted at the top and the bottom. This is actually the reason why you need to have hooks on your stirrups and you can't just use the development length as a straight bar because that bungee cord needs to be developed at the very top of the beam and at the very bottom of the beam because that's where the forces for the compression are coming in and meeting. So it's very important, just as this bungee cord is knotted, that your stirrups have hooks at the top and bottom. I almost wish someone had explained this to me this way when I had shear 
in school, it'd be much more easier to understand. So let's talk also a little about deep beams. ACI has a requirement in deep beams defining them. It was updated in 318.11, 2011. And it says a deep beam is anything that's deeper than LN less than 4H, meaning that it's a very deep, very short beam, a four to one aspect ratio or less. So what are deep beams? What makes a deep beam different? And by the way, strut and tie is useful for all sorts of elements. We're going to get into that, but it's easier to start talking about them as deep beams and then expanding. Today. 